welcome to today's session on data warehousing interview questions and answers. If you missed the video yesterday, then to just give you an idea, in this series, we are going to cover five data warehousing interview questions with their answers each weekday of this week. So let's begin with the five questions for today. So the very first question for today is going to be, what is a data mart? So yesterday we saw what is a data warehouse, what is the use of a data warehouse. A data mart is nothing but a specialized version of that data warehouse. So it is subject area or process dependent, which means that it is designed specifically at a modular level for a particular, let's say, department in your organization and so on. So let's say we have an organization and it has got various departments like the sales department, the finance department, the HR department and so on. So now we design a data warehouse just for a single department. So let's say we are designing it for the sales department. So it is designed in the exact same way. The It's modeled with all the dimensions and fact tables but it has a data only which is related to the sales department so it is not an enterprise level it is a department level data warehouse so what is the use of it why do we need a data mart and why can't we just design it for the whole enterprise the advantages of having a data mart is that you can start slowly and small and you can design a data mart or a data warehouse for a particular department, test it, see if you need to improve anything in it, if you change the architecture of it, or how is the performance of a data warehouse, what are your learnings or mistakes you made while designing that data warehouse, and then incorporate it for the other department in your organization. So this makes it more modular and scalable as well. Now a data warehouse is a lot of money and a lot of resources. So it is a resource intensive as well as a cost intensive process. So if your data warehouse architecture fails for any reason, then it is a very big loss to the organization which designed the data warehouse. Now the next question is, what is OLTP? So you must have heard of this term for OLTP. It basically stands for online transactional processing. Now as the term itself says transactional processing. So we are processing transaction level data here. A transaction is let's say a bank ATM transaction. So you go to an ATM, withdraw money, that is a transaction. Now what does a system need for you to be able to withdraw money? It needs to know your account balance. It needs to know how much you're withdrawing, which you would enter as an input. And then it needs to recalculate your account balance. So that is the information it needs. It does not need your information over the past 10 years, that what was your history like, how much uh, balances you were having in the past three months or so on. It just needs to know your balance at that particular point of time when you are needing to withdraw that money from the ATM. So it just needs that particular real-time snapshot of data. So that is a transactional database requirement. So it is basically in the form of a relational database because you do not need a large amount of data for making that kind of decision for the ATM machine. So it is only a snapshot of data. So snapshot is over time. It is only a real-time snapshot of data. Now this has system has to be very fast and therefore it is known to be latency sensitive. Latency sensitive means that there is no time delay that should be involved in your transaction. So once you make that request, it should be instantly uh, fetch your account balance, give you the money and then recalculate the account balance and save it in your account. There should be no time lag or time delay involved in this process. So this is an OLTP system or online transactional processing system. It should be online all the time. This is what is called an online transaction processing system. On the other hand, a data warehouse, if you have worked on a data warehouse project, you would know that it is only the data is loaded only as a batch process. So it might be loaded once a day, three times a day, five times a day or so on. It's not loaded as soon as it the data is entered in your source system. So there's a time delay that is involved when you want to fetch the output from your data warehouse. So that is the difference between an OLTP and a data warehouse. Okay, moving on to the next question. What is OLAP? Now, OLAP is something that's very opposite to an OLTP system. It's an online analytical processing system. So it's a multi-dimensional model. So it is basically what you have on top of your data warehouse. That is the analytics that you do with the data that you have stored in your data warehouse. So these are basically your reports, multi-dimensional reports, or the cubes that you create on top of your data warehouse. So obviously there are fewer transactions involved because only the business users are dealing with it. So fewer queries would be executed. You can do with a time lag over here. So they are not latency sensitive because 
the data might be you might be working with uh, the previous day's data and you would be fine with it um, it's basically used for reporting purposes analytical purposes and decision making so that is what is an OLAP system next question what is ODS so now this ODS term, what does this mean? ODS is something which is called as operational data store. Now, this is not an OLTP system. This is not an OLAP system. This is not a data warehouse. This is something in between. So, ODS is still used for near real-time reporting. So, near real-time reporting means there might be a time lag, but that time lag is very minimal. So, depending again on your business requirements, what do you mean by near real-time? It's not real-time, but it's as near to real-time as can be implemented by the system. This is used for operational reporting, which means that it is basically you input your source data, something in your source data changes. There's a time lag of, let's say, 10 minutes. After that, you have some report that is generated with that data. So, it's not instant data. It is after a time uh, lag of 10 minutes or whatever is your time range that is defined over there. But it is not a data warehouse where you are processing the previous day's data or so, something like that. So that's why it's known as an interim logical area for data warehouse. And it is not an OLTP system because it, its structure is also like a data warehouse somewhat. You need to clean your data. You only store the data that is needed. You apply your business rules. So you transform your data and then use that data. So a most common uh, form of implementation for an ODS is in the form of materialized views. So materialized views are basically uh, for made for incremental data. So they can be refreshed for incremental data. So you can have your operational reporting done on based on these materialized views. And this ODS can then be used as a source of your proper data warehouse as well. So that this is what is meant by an ODS. Okay, the last question for today. What are the different stages in a data warehouse? A simple question, data warehouse architecture. Basically, what are the different phases or stages in a data warehouse? So whenever you talk about a data warehouse, this is something that would come into your mind whenever data warehouse architecture is discussed or anything of that sort. Your first is your source system. So there can be different kinds of source system. They can be, they can be databases, they can be flat files, they can be mainframe systems, whatever kind of system. So you have different kind of source systems to extract the data from those source systems, clean it, apply your transactional rules, business rules, uh, standardize that data, do all that in your staging area. You fetch the data into your staging area, apply all your transformational rules, and then put it, load it to a data warehouse, which might be composing of various data marts. And then you make use of that data in your data mart with your data access tools, which are your report, reporting tools, your analytical applications, your forecasting, data mining, ad hoc query tools, and so on. So different stages, your source stage, your staging area, where you are cleaning your data, storing it after cleaning your data, then performing your business rules to load it into a data warehouse. So that is your data presentation area or your data warehouse area. So there are three phases, as you can see, source system, staging area, and presentation area. On top of the presentation area, you can use your data access tools. You can then take back the inputs from those data access tools and load your data marks as well. So they can also act as sources for the data warehouse. So this is how your data warehouse architecture basically looks like. So these were the five questions for today. Thanks a lot for watching this video and please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos and I'll talk to you tomorrow with five more questions. See you tomorrow.